State Secretary of the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Canada. Pam, thank you very much for joining us tonight. And thank you very much for being a friend of Hungary and being a uh, strong advocate and promoter of our bilateral relationships. I would like to um, recognize those uh, members of the parliament here who have been so kind today to make contributions on the session of the Canadian Parliament about the importance of our freedom fight of uh, 1956. We appreciate the members of the Liberal Party, the Conservative Party and the NDP Party to uh, give the contributions on the plenary session and I have to tell you that Hungarian people will always remember that session of the Canadian Parliament for sure. I would like to appreciate uh, the uh, presence of um, Melanie and uh, Peter Monk, very good friends of ours, uh, who uh, are among the strongest promoters and advocators of the friendship between uh, the two uh, nations. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, you have uh, one minute. And of course, I uh, welcome the ambassadors uh, who honor us today with their presence. And I especially would like to uh, uh, welcome the ambassador of Slovakia and Serbia. And the only reason why I uh, underline the presence of uh, these two ambassadors is that whoever knows history, recent history of Central Europe knows that uh, our uh, challenges in uh, Central Europe are usually rooted in history and uh, some countries had uh, pretty complicated tensions in, uh, in the recent history in Central Europe and uh, actually our region was part of the problems and not really the solutions but with a lot of personal efforts we have overcome our challenges and I can report to you here in Canada that now Central Europe is the part of the solution and not part of the problem and those historic tensions that we had to face in the central part of Europe are over and even nations who had some uh, pretty uh, challenging issues to overcome were able to overcome these kind of challenges and now with the many personal and institutional uh, investments and uh, efforts in central Europe our nations and our countries are living in peace and that is something that we really have to value in today's world. <laughs> ladies, and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you that I'm honored to stand in front of you tonight uh, to mark the 60th anniversary of our uh, freedom fight in 1956. And I have to tell you that I'm honored to stand in front of you as a representative of a proud nation. A nation which uh, will always be proud to survive the dictatorships. We are proud that the oppressive powers could only take away our freedom and sovereignty for interim period. We are proud of our culture. We are proud of our heritage. We are proud of our Christianity and we are proud of our heroes whom we will always remember. If you have a look at the uh, history of ours, then you can easily admit that Hungary is not only the country of freedom-loving people, but the country of freedom fighters as well. If there is a nation on Earth which is aware of the importance and significance of freedom and sovereignty, then Hungarian nation is that for sure. In 1956, we have proved to the entire world that dictatorship is not rooted in Hungary. In those days, men and women, boys and girls fighting on the streets of Budapest, they have proved that Hungary and Hungarian people 
have the courage to stand up against even an extreme superpower and an extreme overpower. And we have proved that uh, we send a clear message to the world that Hungarian people are not ready to give up their freedom for anything, but we are ready to fight against anyone who would like to take away even a small portion of our freedom or sovereignty. Those of you who know a little bit more about Hungarian history, you know that 1956 was not the first time when we had to fight for our freedom. We had to fight against the Ottomans, against the Habsburgs, and most recently we had to fight against the Nazi and the communist uh, oppression as well. And of course, we fought against all kinds of oppressions during our history, all kinds of overpowers we had to fight for our sovereignty and for our freedom. In 1956, Hungarian people were encouraged. Encouraged externally, but that was it. We have received so many promises of external help at that time. Even at the, in the last hours of the fight for freedom, radio was speaking about an assistance just around the corner. Now, 60 years after, we know that such kind of help, such kind of assistance didn't arrive. What arrived was the Red Army, and what arrived were the Soviet tanks shooting everyone whom they can shot, shoot on the streets of Budapest and other cities in Hungary. And although the developments in Budapest and the developments in the entire country were absolutely known to the international public, the international community remained silent, no re-election was taken, and even the, the Security Council of the United Nations missed the opportunity to help the Hungarians. And despite the fact that our fight for freedom in 1956 was defeated and a brutal revenge kicked off, the memory of our heroes and the memory of their historic efforts gave the Hungarian nation the strength to survive decades of the communist dictatorship. And finally, in 1990, we were successful to regain our freedom and sovereignty. But 34 years, what a difference. We lost 34 years, we lost many opportunities which would have been given if we had been a free country and hundreds of thousands of Hungarians or millions of Hungarians lost their hope for a better way of life. But in the meantime, I have to tell you that we have learned a lot from 1956. And we have to draw the conclusions, especially kind of people who have now the honor to take part in leading the country. One of the lessons we have learned and one of the conclusions we have to draw is that we always have to resist pressure when our sovereignty or freedom is at stake. And the second one is that we have to resist any attempt which want to take away even a small portion of our freedom. And we have to insist that it is exclusively, exclusively the Hungarian people who are authorized to make a decision about Hungary. And uh, we Hungarians, you know, we are definitely sensitive on respect, especially after 1956. And we Hungarians give the respect to everyone, but we expect from everyone to give the respect to Hungary as well. But ladies and gentlemen, here uh, we have the chance to spend tonight together with those ones who really fought for freedom in 1956. And actually, they had to face the dilemma which of course no one of us want to face ever in lifetime. This is to leave or to stay. And I have to tell you that we actually are proud of those ones who decided to leave 
but afterwards became successful members of other great countries and contributed to the success of other great countries. And here I have to tell you that what we have to witness currently, especially in Europe, is an attempt to falsify history. When uh, there are efforts to say that the 56ers are like those ones who are now engaged in the mass migration which has been hitting Europe. And we have to refuse and reject all kind of attempts which want to put these two developments parallel. Because our 56ers escaped to a neighboring country called Austria. They spent weeks, months, or years in refugee camps until there was a country which was ready to accept them. They have not built parallel societies, they were not aggressive, they were thankful, and they did violate borders. This is a real difference. And we are proud of those 38,000 Hungarians who have been accepted here in Canada. And I have to tell you that we will never forget about that. We will be always thankful and grateful to Canada, to this great country, to this great nation, which actually serves as a second home of many Hungarians. And I have to tell you that uh, yesterday I had a chance to take part on celebrations together with the Hungarian community in Ottawa and in Montreal as well. And actually I heard those people singing the Hungarian National Anthem and the National Anthem of Canada. Same people with the same enthusiasm, which shows that they became very good Canadians by remaining very good Hungarians. Ladies and gentlemen, we will always remember that and we will be always thankful for the Canadian people. And I have to tell you that currently, today, yesterday, the day before yesterday, there were Hungarian communities all over the world remembering and commemorating the events of 1956. We really became a global nation, a world nation. Although it was not a wrong decision, that was a development and consequence of history, but we are proud of it. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I have to tell you that we Hungarians love our own country as it is. And uh, I have to tell you that the most important and most significant promise what people like me who have the honor to take part in leading Hungary currently, the most important promise we have to make is that we will never, never allow anyone, never again, to change our country against the will of the Hungarian people. And this is a clear commitment and the uh, memory of our heroes of 1956 will give us the strength to keep it. Thank you very much for having us today, thank you very much for joining and thank you very much for your kind attendance and uh, attention as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Merci d'avoir parlé si éloquemment du courage de vos compatriotes. Ladies and gentlemen, it will soon be time for the main course, a pan-seared Ontario duck 